I think there's always been a need for people to review what they have or to, to try and uh, keep things simple. I mean, I mean, human beings, I think, are made up of two opposing strands, in a way, in the same person. There are people who like things very, very simple, but at the same time like to accumulate things. So it's, it's human nature. Personally, um, I feel much freer without stuff. I, I don't really like physical possessions, apart from you know, the tools to do the job. You know, but I have three children, and my child has another ch a grandchild, so it, it takes a bit of effort. But if you're careful and, and you, you sieve, you need to put things through a sieve what you have and maybe sort things out a bit, it might make your life a little bit easier. I come from Halifax in Yorkshire, which is the West Riding. Um, it's, it's a treeless landscape, it's industrial. They were sort of anti-Catholic, anti-church. You know, they, they, they were a Methodist, you know, and Calvin and Calvin and, and so on. It, they, it, you know, the, the churches had no, very little music, you know, they sang without accompaniment. So there's that, that sort of straightforwardness, and Yorkshire people are quite straightforward. So, you know, my mother didn't like ostentation, she didn't like um, things too rich. So I think, you know, it comes from, uh, just comes from my background. I think, I think you have to be careful when you mix the two. I mean, I've, I've designed uh, churches and I've designed uh, monasteries, all for Catholic Christians. And that's a very special brief, but they, they weren't looking for um, a devout Christian or a Catholic. They were looking for, because I'm not Catholic, they were looking for somebody who understood what they wanted and sort of, as we say in English, got it. And um, I mean, if I'd have been Jewish or Muslim or Buddhist, I, who knows? I mean, I am a, I am a Christian, but they, they, they wanted somebody who would do the job. I think it's very delicate to, to, to mix the two. I mean, one, you know, church, if you achieve the right dimensions and the right materials and all, all the rest, hopefully uh, you can make it sacred. Whereas a shop, you don't, you know, it's not a sacred place. And is it true that you lived for a period of time in a monastery in France? Well, the monks, the monks let me stay. Um, for a week because they wanted me to understand exactly their life. So very unusually, which obviously doesn't happen, I, I slept in the dormitory and I lived their life for, for a week. So I, I got up at three o'clock and, and went to um, and went to the first service of the day and, and then there were seven more after that. It was, cause, and of course there's no talking, so you have a week of no talking. Silence. Yeah, and, but no arguments, no, you know, no, no career, no, no pressure. Everything just drops off. So in a way, this sort of relationship makes sense, you know, when you talk about history and, and the value of time when shaping your projects and your architectures. So what is the sense of history and time in your work? Because I like to really make things as simple as possible and, and work at a design until you you can't add or subtract and make it any better. Um, so you, you would hope that the work is timeless, but of course that's impossible because I think if somebody came across my work in the years ahead, probably will be able to date it to some period around the 20, 21st century, I'm sure, even though it's as simple as I can make it. Um, and I've, I've always been attracted to cultures that value that simplicity throughout history, whether it's the Shakers or, or Greek temples or, or, um, or Japanese 16th century architecture and tea ceremony. Because you traveled, in, you know, you traveled to Japan and had this great opportunity to be the sort of pupil of Mr. Kuramata-san. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, that was, imagine, like a great school, a learning process and to be in to, touch with the Japanese you know, um, philosophy and Japanese math. discipline. Well, it, was, it, was, it was a, a strange yeah, mixture because, you know, in my head, I, the reason I went to Japan was because I thought, I mean, I was very, very naive. Um, but I, I, I just suddenly, I somehow thought the whole of Japan would be 16th century, that it would just be all like in the movies. And, and of course, it's, it's like a vision of hell. 
in some ways the the urban the noise the and, and landscape and the, all the wires and everything and and getting to meet Kuramata of course was amazing but it was very very short uh, it was I was only in Tokyo for a year but I was able to see him socially really I didn't see him work wise and meaningful for your career for your future yeah well he 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 told me to it was him that recommended me to go to um, the architectural association School of Architecture in London uh, and he'd been told about it by Isazaki Arata and uh, I mean you only find this out afterwards because it's the, he just said oh he got fed up with me hanging around and um, and he just wanted me to <laughs> you know to go and do architecture myself because I, I never thought I was going to be an architect I, I never had a plan to to open an office or get clients or do anything like that. It, it all just came bit by bit. And how in your vision does architecture bridge in a natural world with the transcendent ones and how you know, important is it nature in your work? Well it's, it's an interesting thing isn't it because we are you know as, as human beings we've, we've in the last I don't know half century or a century you know we've destroyed or cut back so much of the natural world and, and the animals it's it's a terrible thing but but that a human being also culturally I mean, cannot survive without culture so I, I think you, you you need habitation and therefore you need a, a city for, for, for the cultural aspects otherwise the because the human brain needs all of that. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a dichotomy. And last but not least, last question. So would you say that an architect is a humanist and that architecture is a humanistic discipline, a way of seeing, building and changing the world? Of course. Of, of course it's humanistic. It's, it's about humans. It's, you know, a building is for people. I mean, the, the, it's nothing without the people. I mean, you, you can wander around it, an empty building, but in, in essence, it's nothing you know, without the people, and the people need to feel the atmosphere. You know, when you walk into architecture, you feel something. I mean, I think that's the difference between architecture and buildings. It's very, very clear, and, and I always hope, and um, touch wood, so far I think I've been lucky, is that, if, if you walk into one of the spaces that I've done, you feel something. And it doesn't matter how many, how many photographs you, you look at of work, until you actually go there, you know, you, you, you just don't get it. Like all the, the amazing architects, like, you know, Ponte or Mies or anything, you know, to go there is so different. He said, touch wood. So is wood and marble and stone your favorite materials to work with? Well, I, I'm more comfortable with natural materials. And uh, materials are in, an important part of, of, of building and, and making, uh, making space. Um, but the biggest one is probably light. Mm -hmm.